Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in our deep programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about functions, but I want to go ahead and start putting things together again with what we've been talking about in previous lessons with things like ref, pass by reference, and reference types. And of course, we've learned about some things like L values and R values if you've been watching this series. If you haven't, make sure you check out those lessons. But in this lesson specifically, I'm going to be talking about reference types and revisiting our previous lessons code here to talk about what happens when you pass a reference type with ref. As we know, reference types will in fact change the value inside of the function. But again, what is ref actually doing? What actually changes? And that's what I want to go ahead and look at in this lesson. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at our code here. And again, just as a reminder from the previous lessons, struct are value types, meaning that they are passed by value by default. And uh, we have classes, which are reference types. So things like classes, uh, dynamic arrays, or slices, and associative arrays would be reference types, meaning that they're going to be modified when they're passed into a function. So for this lesson, I want to go ahead and just ignore struct. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that code here. And uh, let's get rid of all of our uh, struct here and just work with the pass by reference here. I'll go ahead and space things out just a little bit here. And let's go ahead and give a quick review of what we've learned in the previous uh, lessons here. Again, just to put everything uh, together here. So again, two different functions. Uh, both of them are working with reference types, which are classes by default. So let's just go ahead and make a, a comment here. Classes in D are reference uh, types. And again, that's a distinguishment we have to make in the language. It's different than languages like C++, but in general, it's a good thing. We're upfront deciding, is this a reference type or a value type? And we'll talk more about classes later on in the series, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But again, the idea is this has different capabilities than something like a struct. The keyword matters. Okay, and with that said, again, with pass reference type uh, by value here means that, well, anytime we pass a reference type here, this is the thing that I'm making the distinguishment with by value versus by ref, which includes this keyword. Okay, so this ref does have sort of meaning. We're going to find out for these two examples here, functionally, nothing really new is going on. But what does ref actually allow us to do that we couldn't otherwise do? So that's what we'll want to pay attention to. Okay, so anyways, let's kind of walk through this example and see what's going on. So again, I'm going to create my class here, C1, and establish some new memory on the heap. We've got to talk about new a little bit later on and heap allocations, but that's basically giving us a block of memory to store this class here, which basically just stores one uh, integer here for data. That's it. Okay, so we have that allocation, and then we pass in C1 here with the first function, pass reference type by value. That's right up here. And we're going to change the data to three. So wherever that uh, data is stored in this block of memory, we're going to change that value to three. And again, since it's a reference type, it is going to modify that actual uh, data in C1. And we'll see that change reflected here. We should see a three. And then likewise, we're going to go ahead into our next function and again, pass reference type by ref here. And again, because it's a reference type, we can modify the underlying data. So we should see a four printed here. Okay, so that should get us up to speed with what we have seen uh, previously. And if I run this again, I get a three and a four. Okay, so at least at this point, functionally, these are the same. But again, what does this ref keyword give us? Well, we sort of have to think about what reference is, and this will be helpful if you're coming from a C or C++ background. But again, basically what I'm doing when I allocate this memory here, and I say, hey, give me a new class here. Uh, that's basically a block of memory. Mm -hmm. Then, well, I want to make sure that in this case here, when I'm passing the reference type by value, I don't change what that's pointing to, this block of memory here. And that's the difference with what ref gives me. So let me show you an example, and then I'll go ahead and illustrate it on a whiteboard to help you out here. So basically, what I could do here in this particular function is say, OK, let's set the data equal to three, but I'll change my mind. I'll actually say arg equals new class. So sort of pointing it to a new chunk of memory here. And then I'll actually say arg data equals 5000. OK, now, if I if I'm passing this by value, then that means essentially the uh, pointer or the actual reference type data that it's pointing to the underlying data here shouldn't be able to change after the functions called. 
C1 should still point to this uh, initial allocation. And when I illustrate this, I think it'll make a little bit more sense, but let's just go ahead and run this experiment here. So let me make sure I save, I rerun this, and nothing's changed, okay? Even though I've taken the reference type and tried to establish or link it to some new memory here with a new heap allocation, it's not changed. But when I try in this example down here, and let's go ahead and just paste that in here. And let's go ahead and make this a different number, just so again we can see that clearly it's um, you know doing something different. We should see that the memory that it's pointing to has changed. Okay, I'm allowed to uh, modify what this C1 is pointing to. Okay, with the ref keyword. Okay, the chunk of memory that's storing our class. So again, let me go ahead and save here, rerun, and now we can see that it's actually changing, and we've changed the block of memory to store uh, this new class here and modified that data to 9999, okay? Okay, so how do we make sense of this? Well, this is where a little bit of a whiteboard illustration <laughs> will be useful here. Um, and the other tool that we can sort of use here, again, if useful, is the address of operator. Uh, and first and foremost, let's just go ahead and do that. So if I write line uh, for C1 and get the address here, after calling this function, and then I write line for uh, C1 again after um, passing in. Uh, oops, let me go ahead and uh, put it here. After doing the by ref here, where I've established new memory, then these should be different addresses. So again, let's just sort of do that little experiment to prove it to ourselves. And uh, if I look at this here, what I see is, well, C1 still the same address here, right? It's still this location here, okay? We haven't gotten rid of it. So, I mean, let's try to dive a little bit deeper and see if we can use our uh, address of tool to uh, figure out exactly where this is pointing. So where can I understand this sort of mystery here? Because all this is giving me is, well, again, this location here, C1. So let's actually go into our functions here and see what is actually getting passed in here. So if I write line here, and I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of help here, pass reference, type by value. Uh, and let's go ahead and just print out the um, address here. I'm going to go ahead and do this on two statements. It's a little bit easier so I don't have to mess with things uh, too much. So write, and then I'll write out on a separate line the address of arg here. And then let's go ahead and paste this in here. And uh, let's just go ahead and do pass reference type by ref. Okay, so what am I looking at here exactly? So if I'm passing the reference type by ref here with this keyword, I should see the same address that I'm seeing here that we're writing out here. Again, uh, this little experiment here, I mean, I might as well just get rid of uh, the addresses here and just paste it here, right? This is our original address, okay? So this is original address, okay? Uh, so that's the idea here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try to uh, run this here. Oops, let me keep our code here. <laughs> I'll do a save and let's go ahead and run and let's see what we see here. Okay, so here's the original address here, the original block of memory where I have C1. And then when I call this function pass reference type by value, let's take a look at this address here. Okay, and I'm just looking at the last two digits here to quickly see that this is different here. Okay, so this thing here, the address of this argument is in fact some sort of copy. Now what that copy is actually holding is some way for us to modify the data in the original structure. Okay, and we can do this through the use of a pointer. Okay, so this is how folks, again, if you're coming from a C or C++ background, you'd call this pass by pointer. Okay, I can't adjust where this thing is pointing to because again, it's um, a different address. So that change is not gonna be reflected in C1 here. Okay, and again, I'll illustrate this on the whiteboard to help make this a little bit more clear. But in this example here, where I did pass reference type by ref with the ref keyword, notice that this address here, uh, F0888 here, F0888 here, and then you know D29B here, D29B, 7FFC, 7FFC, that's matching this actual address here, okay? So I am allowed to create new memory and point it elsewhere here, okay? And then modify that underlying data. Okay, so last experiment that I wanna go ahead and show then is again, um, since we have the address here, um, let's go ahead and just uh, make this a little bit 
uh, nicer here. Let's, let's just go ahead and print out the uh, where the data actually lives here. Okay, so let's do this uh, C1, uh, and let's kind of give ourselves some labels here, uh, where C1 is. And let's go ahead and I'm going to just space things out so that they're a little bit uh, nicer here. Uh, and let's go ahead and do uh, C1 dot data. Okay, so we get the actual uh, address here of where data is stored. So the address of data. Uh, and then let's go ahead and just repeat these uh, experiments here. Uh, so let's go ahead and say, uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, we want to do this uh, C1 after by value. Okay. And data after by value. Uh, I'll just put a, uh, an abbreviation here by value. So after that call, and let's get rid of this uh, comment. It doesn't have any meaning here. And then let's go ahead and write this out here again. Uh, we know the data is changing, so I'll just get rid of that. Uh, after by ref and by ref. Okay, just so we can again explain what's going on in the memory. And then again, I'm going to illustrate this. Uh, so we can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and run it and take a look at our results here. Um, and let's see what happens. Okay, so originally, here's our memory address, C1. Data is stored somewhere within this class here, so we can kind of keep an eye on that address. And then uh, let's go ahead and see where our other comments were here. So pass uh, reference type by value. Uh, and then here was uh, the first uh, instance here. So we could go ahead and see what this arg is. And again, seeing that it's something uh, different here. So telling us that it's a copy of this sort of reference uh, type. It's just holding on to the actual reference here. And then we can modify the data that's stored in, in it here. Okay, so that's what we did uh, to start. Okay, um, so then let's go ahead and see uh, the results here. And again, I'm just kind of looking at the addresses here. Uh, so let me actually line things up a little bit. Let's get rid of some of this noise here. Let's get rid of this here. There we are. That'll make things a little bit uh, cleaner for us so we can just see the addresses. Uh, and maybe a space here. Uh, and again, I'll put the whole code on the screen momentarily. Just kind of follow with me here. If this is new for you. Okay, so again, C1 here. Here's the address of our... Uh, initial object that we created here uh, in our memory and where the data is actually stored here, okay, in this location. And then C1, uh, after we do some modification by uh, the value, again, as we've learned, it shouldn't have changed here, okay? We, we haven't changed where we're sort of storing this data. And in fact, we can see the, the C1.data by value here is, again, exactly the same. Now, again, when I do this by reference here, where this allocation actually did something and we change where we're going to store our data, well, C1, again, it's sort of the same location, right? It's always this location of wherever this thing on uh, line 24 uh, was created here. But the actual uh, storage here, we'll notice, is different for where our data is stored here. So again, some link has uh, been updated here, again, where the storage is for this particular class here to store data. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to illustrate this again on the whiteboard, the idea here uh, with our code here. So we've got our uh, void main here. And again, I create this class C1 equals new class. And I'm just gonna indicate here in this block of memory that we have our data. Okay, that's what happens when we do this sort of allocation. And again, let me make this a little bit smaller just so you can see everything on the screen here. Uh, as I mentioned, I'll go ahead and put these uh, addresses here so you can kind of follow along with the flow here. Okay, so here's what we've got here. Um, and then again, when I make the call for uh, pass reference, uh, so I'll go ahead and label this up here, pass reference, type. So again, that's going to be something that we, again, are modifying, which is just a class uh, by value that gets here in this uh, parentheses, some sort of uh, copy 
that points to the same location here. Okay, so that's the idea. And then I'm able to modify the underlying data here. So I did things like arg dot, let's go ahead and look at uh, what I officially did here. Uh, if I go ahead and look up here, arg dot data, you know, equals three, that changes the underlying data in this block of memory. Because again, I have this uh, sort of pointer here. And let me go ahead and just label this again here. Uh, for curly braces, arg dot three, or arg dot data equals three. Again, I sort of had this way to point to this block of memory, find data, and change it to three wherever it is in this block of memory. Okay, so I hope that that much makes sense. What I don't have the ability to do is to take this arg here and create or change what this points to, right? What C1 points to. I'm not able to allocate C1 to another block here where data is stored. Okay, so that's sort of the whole point here. So when I do pass, uh, reference type by ref here. Then what I get is the actual, again, we look at the um, address when we print it out that we actually have uh, the actual, you know, whatever arg is should be matching C1 here. So again, I think that's worth, uh, let's go ahead and just put that up one more time with this experiment here. Let's go ahead and print these out. Uh, our addresses, oops, our DMD main. And again, if I scroll up here, well, again, see when I pass the reference type by value and I pass the reference type by ref here, this is the same address as C1, what I'm doing by reference. When I'm passing the reference type by value, this is again, a different copy. That's why I can't change in this example by value what this memory here, our original C1 points to. But with this example, I can, okay? Because I have the actual uh, address here of the thing um, that I'm referring to, in this case, arg, uh, and then I'm pointing that to a new chunk of memory here. So let's finish off this example here with this illustration where, you know, I could do arg uh, dot data equals four, that'll change this block here. Because again, whatever I'm passing in here, since it's done by ref, it's changing this block here. But again, since I'm passing in uh, by ref here, that means if I change here, arg equals new class, then I get a new block of memory somewhere. I'm gonna draw it here. Doesn't necessarily mean the scope is within this function, but you know, here it is. And now when I do arg, dot data equals nine, 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 nine. That's changing this block of memory here. Okay. Now I still have here my C1, um, uh, that that's at the same address, right? Because it's address is here, you know, that could be line 24 or whatever. Um, but it's just that the underlying data that it points to. So when I do dot data again is now over here, wherever this block of memory was. Okay, and this will go out of scope when it's not used. And we have to talk about the uh, garbage collector and these types of things here uh, in the deep programming language to figure out how we get rid of that. Okay, so with that said, I know we took a little bit of a deep dive to try to understand this, and we haven't really looked at pointers yet in the deep programming language, uh, but this should be kind of familiar to folks who know or understand uh, the difference with pass by pointer and pass by reference in a language like C++. But I hope this sort of visual again just gives you an idea of the importance when we pass in a reference type by ref that we can actually change the reference and the sort of underlying uh, storage. So our allocations with new do something. Okay, so with that said, let me go ahead and just show all the code on the screen one more time so you can see the experiment. I like to do these experiments with address, um, just to again, show you that things are in different locations. And again, that was the big deal here, seeing that C1's data has actually changed here. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope that sort of puts things together in terms of uh, pass by reference, pass by value on the idea of reference types and value types. Of course, you're welcome to practice and create these little experiments so you yourself can understand better what's going on in the language. 
All right, folks, with that said, if you still have questions, feel free to comment below in the discussion, and I'll be happy to answer those. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss other lessons. And as always, thank you for your time and attention.